contract we're entering into today is the only contract that it's justifiable to enter into. To help each other become conscious. Or, to put it more even straighter, we are each entering into a contract to get straight or become conscious ourselves through the use of group process. That's the only really way we can say it. That if you think you can become more conscious by another means other than being with other people, do it. There is a stage in one's process of consciousness evolution where satsang or sangha, that is hanging out with other people who are on the path, is useful. And then there are other parts of the journey where they're completely irrelevant. We are following at this moment the upaya, the method, of using our senses to go beyond our senses. We're using a tantric method. That is, we're using each other in form in order to transcend each otherness in form. Because everything that's in my head that you now think is not in your head, but will be by the end of the day, were you conscious, you would realize is already in your head. So you are in an illusion now, I am in an illusion, that this is a process, and we are trying to use the illusion to transcend the illusion. And when you can bring your mind to one point in this, such that when I gave you that instruction for three minutes, think of nothing but one form, and you're able to do that without any elaboration, without any other thoughts, and so on, then you are ready to go through a doorway because you have developed the instrument you need to do it, which is the instrument of one-pointedness of mind. <coughs> there are a number of uh, Western models of how things happen that we are all somewhat stuck in, which is that there is something to do, is the first one. We've got to do something. A person comes and says, I'm confused, what should I do? Note he is not too confused to ask, what should I do? which is a program he has in his head. If he were totally confused, he'd be free, but he isn't. He isn't confused enough. And I say to him, it doesn't matter what you do. And this is irritating to him. He thinks he's asked the question wrong, and that if he asked it right, I'd really tell him what to do. And he says, well, shall I meditate or should I just go out and, you know, make love and eat pizzas? And I said, doesn't matter. He says, should I eat meat or should I? Doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. 
Should I hang out around beautiful people or should I... It doesn't matter. Now here, I don't eat meat. I hang out around beautiful people. I'm working on my consciousness full time and I'm saying to him, it doesn't matter. Now how could that be possible? Am I just lying? Does it matter to me? A guy came up to me the other night and he said at a meeting in Tufts and he says, would you mind if I took a razor and cut off your beard? And I said, yes. <laughs> hmm. He said, it's my gay uniform. I said, if you came up to me and held me down and cut off my beard, it wouldn't matter to me. That would be the way it is. Now I don't have a beard. See, the reason I do everything I do is because I do everything I do. There are choices being made every minute of the day, but the question is, who is making the choices? And the answer is that I'm not making the choices. The choices are happening. It's not my but thy will. The reason I say to people it's not, it doesn't matter is because to the extent that they're asking the question, what do I do, they're already asking something and therefore the process is so clearly in operation that it's not like they can stop asking the question. They can stop for a minute or more, but they can't stop. And it turns out that once you start to ask a question, once you start to see through the illusion, once you start to realize that there is a state of being conscious, or in Grigifian terms, a higher faculty, or different degrees of enlightenment, or objective consciousness, or whatever metaphor you want to use, the spirit, once you realize that, then everything else becomes part of the process of coming to that. And in fact, even before you realize that, everything in life was part of the process of coming to that anyway. Except that you weren't aware that that's what it was you were doing. When you make love, it's to come to the light. When you work to be successful, it's to have a certain feeling of bliss which is very light. When you do any act which you previously say, well, I'm doing that for selfish motives, that is still coming to the light. And when you begin to see that selfish motives is a cop-out to label them thus, it's all selfish motives. But the social responsible link that is obvious immediately the minute you start to become conscious is that you can do nothing for another human being but work on yourself and that as you work on yourself, you get to a state almost immediately where you see that every other human being is yourself, and therefore, whatever you are doing, you are working on yourself, and you further see that until any, everybody makes it, nobody makes it because everybody is one. It's just a sequence of thoughts you go through as you start to meditate. And then the whole hype of, am I doing it for me or doing it for you, becomes totally irrelevant. Totally irrelevant.